When I was a young teen, maybe 13, I was home alone that evening. My brother was at his friend's house for the night and my dad was fishing. It was dark and I was sitting on the couch watching TV. All was quiet, doors were locked. Out of nowhere, the TV went black. Then it turned into a snowy screen with no sound. It's wicked quiet and the hair on my neck started to stand. Then I heard something heavy being drug on the floor directly above me. I'm now terrified, thinking someone snuck in the house and I'm all alone. I sit perfectly still in order to listen for footsteps. Nothing. So I go into the kitchen and grab a knife, cause you never know. I open the door upstairs and it's pitch black. I yelled and warned whomever I had a weapon and would use it. Nothing. Silence. So I creep up the stairs not knowing what to expect, hoping no one is there. And all of this is not real. I reach the landing and nothing is there. Only one bedroom up there and I was ready to kick the door open. One, two, three. Not a soul in the room. As my eyes dart from side to side, making sure no one is there, I notice something isn't right. Once you walk through the door, there is a long eight foot maybe dresser packed with clothes. Somehow, this heavy dresser's left side was pulled about one and a half foot away from the wall. No explanation how, even scratch marks on the wood floor from where it was pulled. It's never happened again, but this is only one story. This story took place about six years ago. We just moved into a new home a few doors down from my mother-in-law's. She had been diagnosed with cancer, so we moved closer to be able to help her. My husband and I had one child at this time. He was around two or three years old. My son had always shared a room with us till we moved there. His room was on the far side of the house. We had a baby monitor in his room, just in case. About two weeks after we moved in, my husband left for work about eight or 9 p.m. as he worked thirds then. Our son was asleep and I stayed up watching TV for a little while. All seemed well as I lay on my bed and listening to the TV, hoping for some sleep. As I start to drift off, I hear quick footsteps like our son was running to our bedroom door. I sit up, expecting my son to open the door. I wait and wait, but the door never opens. I go and open the door, expecting him to be standing there, but he wasn't. I walk down the hallway and don't see him anywhere. I go to the kitchen to get a drink of water before I try to go to sleep again. Thinking this was my sleepy head playing tricks as the house was so silent, I knew my son wasn't awake. I take my drink of water and something catches my eye. In the darkness in the opposite hallway across from me, I see a little silhouette. I feel a rush and my legs get weak. I call my son's name and ask if he's okay. He stands there perfectly still and silent. As I round the counter to go to him, he says, mommy, the little girl won't stop playing and keeps waking me up. My heart skips a beat and I grab him up and take him to my room. Needless to say, he slept with mommy for a few nights after that. Despite not being a believer, I've always felt my house had some sort of entity inside it. It's been here since the Victorian era and originally was a shady warehouse owned by an even shadier businessman. My family is in no way related to this businessman. We are Zimbabweans, not sure if I have to clarify, but we are white. To cut to the meat, in 1809, seven people were found strung up in a basement that no longer exists. A seance was performed in that same basement to communicate with the spirits of the dead. The whorehouse businessman died in the room that I now live in. In 1811, 
The house was owned by a surgeon who was famously pretty bad. My town has a bar named after him. The house was abandoned until 1847, when the now garden was used to dispose of disease victims. And on top of all that, six babies have died in here from various causes, not excluding dog attack and surgery mishap. Onto the experience of living here. Most notably, I once stepped out of my room into the corridor to see a large flaming cross in front of the mirror. It was there for about half of a second. Any visitors who come here feel really cold at night and feel scratching on their backs. Women with pregnancy-related trauma feel incredibly uncomfortable and nauseous walking through the kitchen. Friends of mine who stayed over are no longer friends of mine. Jokes, but there's at least two who won't enter my room. Often people see floating limbs poking out from behind doors or entrances. People have hellish nightmares. Constant tapping and scratching on the walls, doors slamming shut. I recall being stared at by an entity from the corner of my room. My brother has woken up with long, deep scratches on his face and hands. My father refuses to talk about what he saw in one of our lofts. My mother is terrorized by voices whenever she's home alone. Lights flicker when you approach them. Once you pass them, you feel helpless and incredibly cold. Non-sleepwalkers sleepwalk. Posters and signs are ripped off the walls. I've had my hand grabbed with immense pressure when I reached into a cupboard for a drink. Women yell, footsteps come up the stairs, dishes have faces on them, clothes get ruined, hats get stolen and never returned. People occasionally get flung around. Sometimes food spoils in minutes. It's kind of shitty. We moved away from that house two years ago, so it's kind of clickbaity though. When I was around 19, a good friend of mine's dad had died suddenly. Needless to say, she was devastated. It was a really hard time for her. Her boyfriend and his family had a barbecue, and I was good friends with him also, so I went. His family and my parents were also good friends, and a lot of people I know are their friends and family. So I just started smoking, and I get there late, all high, stupid, minding my own business, in the corner with my friend Nick. In comes a lady named Mary Carmen. She's an older Mexican lady, around her 40s or 50s at the time. I didn't know this at the time, but I guess she's claimed to be able to seance the dead. Everyone is in the kitchen or in the backyard, which are only separated by the screen door, which I'm standing right next to. All of a sudden, I hear a loud thump, and I just see Mary Carmen on the floor. So a couple of people go check on her, and she starts to kind of seize. I'm tripping hard at this point, and even harder when she started speaking in tongue. So this is going on for a couple seconds, and me and Nick are just staring at each other like, what the fuck? All of a sudden, she shouts, Lisa, my friend whose dad passed away. Lisa starts stepping towards her, but kind of slowly, because I'm sure she was tripping too. So when she goes up to her, Mary Carmen hugs her tight and starts whispering in her ear. At first, it seemed normal, aside from the obvious. But all of a sudden, Lisa puts her hand in her mouth and starts crying. A couple more seconds of Mary Carmen whispering and Lisa just takes off running, crying. I don't remember much after, but eventually Mary Carmen got back up and I pretty much left right after. I've never been religious or a believer of ghosts and shit, and neither was my mom who was there. When I talked to my mom, she said, wow, that's fucked up. I can't believe an older woman would take an advantage of a younger girl in such a vulnerable state. So I kind of adopted that mindset. A few days later, or maybe the next day, I don't know, a bunch of us are together talking about what happened, and I pretty much repeated what my mom told me. The thing that creeps me out and what makes this so memorable to me is Lisa's boyfriend looks at me and says, I don't know, bro, I talked to her, and I guess Mary Carmen told us something only her dad would know. To this day, I don't know what she said, and I kind of want to ask, but never did, 
just because of the subject being so sensitive. It just trips me out because as much as I don't believe, or I guess I don't want to believe, Mary Carmen and Lisa weren't that close and not people that would talk to each other a lot. So I don't know how she would get that kind of information. To this day, I still think about that shit being one of the weirdest experiences of my life. About a month ago, I went with eight of my friends to a cabin. That belongs to one of the friends that came along. This is placed right on the shore of a big rigger. We only spent two nights there. On the last night, we were all sitting on the dock. This is more like a platform because it's surrounded by a fence and it's not used for boats, only for sitting around like we were. And we were having the usual night talks. It was about 4 a.m. Then, suddenly, I heard a weird sound and I told them to stay quiet and listen. We shut up and all heard a melody that seemed like the kind of song you hear from a music box. The song lasted for less than 10 seconds and vanished into the silence of the night. We all started to freak out and question what the fuck did we just witness? We were alone at the cabin and there weren't any other houses nearby. We spent the rest of the night sitting together on the dock talking about paranormal stuff and coming up with theories. What's weird about the song is that the sound seemed to be coming from everywhere and it also seemed to be very near. The next day when we woke up, the friend that has the cabin told us about a bit about the history of the house and about his grandparents that had built it. And apparently his grandpa gave his wife, my friend's grandma, a music box when they were young. But he wasn't sure if this was actually true. The whole place was quite creepy. A lot of weird dolls were in every room, but I brushed it off in the beginning because the cabin was old. If we didn't have it to leave that day and our train wasn't that early, we would have investigated more by going to the villages that were about one hour and a half away by foot and asking the locals about any similar stories. So I asked my friend to tell me more about the history of the cabin and this is what I found out. In the region the cabin is placed, about 50 years ago, some tunnels were built and some of the workers died in the process. My friend's grandparents, that were of course young at the time, decided to pay tribute to those who died by putting a cross on one of the mountains that were found there. With the help of a few other people, the cross was right in front of the deck we were sitting on, on the other side of the river. My friend unfortunately can't ask his grandparents more at the moment because they don't live in the same town as us and he doesn't want to tell them this over the phone. So I'm 17 and I've been living with ghosts my entire life so far. The earliest sighting of one of them I can ever remember I was at least seven or eight and I woke up from a nightmare. I was so scared, but I went down the hallway to my mom's room and she had this old mirror. And I got in there, I sat on her bed to go under the covers. Before I did, I got this weird feeling like dread and fear go through my body and the feeling of someone looking at me. I turned towards the mirror and there was a tall dark figure standing there inside of it. He wore a hat and all I could see for his features was a big smile and he was tilted to look down at me. He was there the entire night I stayed under the covers. I knew he was still there because I got the feeling he was looking at me. Since then, I gave him the name The Mirror Man. The second time he bothered me, his hand was coming out of the wall to reach for me as well as his foot coming out. I was freaking out and my mom noticed and she opened the front door. She yelled and cursed at him to get out. And for two years, I wasn't bothered at all by him. Instead, there was a ghost girl that liked sitting on the stairs near my room. And we could usually hear her running around and laughing. I would hear scraping of somebody walking near my window at 3 a.m. every night, like they were dragging their feet across the road. Or the dragging of something heavy outside my door. The knocking on my walls on the second floor near my window where nobody can reach without a ladder. 
Recently, I heard humming in my backyard at around 4 a.m. Loud enough for me to hear even past my headphones. Aggressive coughing every once in a while, like the person had tuberculosis. One night, I was laying in my bed and I heard some scraping noises at the end of my bed. I moved my laptop out of the way so I could see what I thought it was. My cat, because she sleeps in my room, but there was a pale white face looking back at me from the foot of my bed. I sat there, staring at like we had a staring contest for at least four minutes, and then it moved, so I grabbed a sock and threw it at it and yelled at it to go away so I can sleep. What did I get in return? It tugged at my hair for a little bit. This is going to be the last one for now because all of them have been up and about recently. A lot more I was sitting in my room. When it was in the basement, my mom and little brother were on the other side of my door in the living room and I was playing on the PS4 with my friends. And I was talking to them, but as I was speaking, I felt two hands come up to my neck and squeeze. I could feel every single finger squeezing my neck. I paused in confusion and felt my neck, but there was nothing there. But I can still feel pressure on it for at least three seconds go by, and something pulled my hair. I was a little annoyed and got up, told it to leave me alone. I may have provoked it a little, I was just tired and annoyed, so I wasn't thinking. But it stopped. It has now retreated into my closet. I can still feel that burnt chicken nugget looking at me. A few hours ago, something happened very interesting. I was sitting in my room and I was on the PS4 with my friends. We were playing a game together and I got the feeling someone was watching me. So I looked to my door that is on my left from my TV, near my closet. The light is on outside the door in the hallway. My lights are off in my room, and I can see shadows moving under my door from the light. But there were no feet or no noise. I was getting up to open the door to see if it was one of my siblings messing with me. I was just about to get to my door, when my door was kicked open so hard, it banged off the wall and made a dent with the doorknob. I stood there in shock and my friends were yelling out to me what was going on, what was that noise? I walked out my room slowly and looked around. Nobody was there. If someone was going to kick my door in, they would have to run really quick to get out of my view. But there was nothing, just the hallway, all doors closed and the light on and then the humming began outside my window. I ran to my window, opened my curtains and there was nothing there. But the only thing that was there was the feeling of eyes on me. I'm greatly annoyed, but I'm only used them jiggling the doorknobs, moving the door, but not kicking my door open. That one's new. Me and my two brothers would sometimes have dreams involving portals to other worlds. They weren't necessarily believable places, like a cartoon dinosaur world, for example. What was, ex what was unique about these dreams was that they were often shared dream experiences. One of my brothers, Brother A, would not dream about portals, but rather would wake up, or perhaps dream he woke up. He would be able to tell one of us if we had a dream with a portal to another world because we were missing from our bed. I'll skip the majority of the stories because they rely on the witness of my two brothers. For that same reason, I would be very skeptical about the dreams until I could get some kind of proof. I had one where I found one of my brothers, Brother B, and showed him a portal. We went in together and it was the set of the beginning of the universe in the Bible where light was created. Everything turned white for a while and then I could see again my brother was gone. From there, I watched the universe get created. I'm not religious, but bear in mind that the portal world could sometimes be way less believable. When I woke up, Brother A said he couldn't find me and asked if I had a portal dream. Brother B recalled that I had shown him a portal, that everything turned white, and that he got frustrated 
and left before the light had faded. I hadn't told either of them about my dream beforehand. A little context. Mid-July, my sister upsized into this apartment that's located in a pretty secluded spot. There are forests all around. Open her windows and there are trees everywhere. I decided to pay her a visit for the first time since it was my birthday and the first night in. I believe I experienced something, but I'm not sure. She and I have had separate encounters, but I haven't told her mine. My sister is a little sensitive to all things paranormal. She doesn't see spirits on a daily basis, but she tends to feel energies at certain places. She also has a puppy, a little Westie, that she believes has seen whatever is in the apartment. At first, I told her she was being paranoid because it's a new place. But after last night, I'm not too sure, to be honest. The one major experience she's had about two weeks ago is that while sleeping, she woke up feeling intense fear, only to see a weird shadowy thing floating above her bed before fading away. She described its shape as what happens when you drop ink in water? And we both felt like it was just the mind playing tricks. We watch a lot of paranormal videos, but I don't think I've seen what my sister is describing. Oftentimes it's a figure, mists or clouds, or just orbs, right? Cut to my first night here. I wake up feeling weird. I'm sleeping on my tummy. Then I hear whooshing sounds moving from the left to the right of me. I'm fully awake at this point. The ceiling fan and air con are running, but I have a blanket up to my neck, maybe? I'm definitely not feeling cold. The air feels heavy, like it's a controlled blast of air. And every time it moves from the left to the right, when it passes my face, I feel it rest on my face for a bit and a soft bang near my ears follows. It happens approximately three times before I feel a weight on the back of my neck, then travels down to the bottom of my spine. I finally move over to lie on my back, and whatever it was is completely gone. The weirdest thing is, I don't necessarily feel fear, but my heart rate is super high. I didn't tell her because I feel like it was sleep paralysis, which I've never experienced before. Or maybe my body getting accustomed to sleeping in a new environment. Last night, however, my sister asked me if I opened one of her drawers seconds after I left her room. I didn't open them. And when I left the room, I don't think they were open either. If anybody could tell me what they think I experienced or give more insight on this matter, I'd be very grateful. Nineteen ninety-eight. I'm four years old. My parents, my older brother and I, moved in our house. We live in a town that used to be an English community. Someone once told me that these English people belonged to a religion. I don't know which one. That clung, grasp or fill a lot on the earth, and that is why when many died, they did not leave this world. So in this town, there are many old houses and many ghost stories. There were always many noises, perhaps striking, but that we associate with the noises of a house. The upper floor was a concrete floor. I mean a floor, not finished. And one of the noises I heard was the footsteps of a barefoot person coming up the stairs and walking down the hall. Sometimes I would get up thinking that my parents were coming up to greet us. But since nobody showed up, I went to look for them and they were still sitting at the table watching TV. Not much more happened. Around 2008, I'm 14 years old. At this stage, this man who lives in my house begins to manifest much more. Sometimes I would see a shadow out of the corner of my eye. A couple of times, I saw it through the mirror of my room. But when I looked again, there was no one. 
A friend of my brother told me that she once saw a man sitting on the couch in my house. And when I asked her for his description, he was the same man that I had seen a couple of times. He was tall, brown hair, short beard, glasses and skinny. On the afternoons that I would come home from school and stay alone in my house, I would listen to someone play the piano. A couple of times, I heard him humming songs too. I also used to have the feeling that he was present or where he was in the house. A feeling that I could not explain to someone who did not feel it because it was not a suggestion. It was like a kind of security. This is kind of weird. Sometimes I would close my eyes, but I would, could distinguish his shadow. Anyway, the presence that used to live in my house and did not bother me again began to disturb me. I felt that he was following me, that he knew where I was noticing him and that he wanted to be noticed. He was more and more present. I was very scared because I was younger, so I told my family. 2010, I'm 16 years old. My mom meets this very spiritual woman, let's call her Anna, and tells her the story. Anna offers to come to my house to take him out. The fact that Anna was offering it for free made me trust that she didn't want to rip us off. We organized one day in the morning. Only Anna and one other person could be in my house. And since I was the one who felt the presence, I stayed with her. Anna told me that we were going to go through every room in my house in a clockwise direction. In each room, she did something called key of something I don't remember. Yale de in Spanish. She closed her eyes and made some signs with her hands. When she finished, we went to the next room, almost always in silence. Almost nothing happened, only that, one, in my brother's room, my ears are suddenly clogged, or plugged, I don't know the word. Two seconds later, Anna tells me, my ears are clogged. That means he knows I want to take him out and he's trying to lower my energy. Two, in my room, when Anna is doing this key thing, I suddenly feel like he left. And again, Anna tells me after two seconds, I think he left, but we're still going to finish with the rest of the rooms. When Anna left, my house was so different. It was like pulling a heavy backpack off your back. Since you were used, so used to having it, you didn't remember what it was like to feel liberated. It was as if the air weighed 20 kilometers less. That first night. That was the first night living in that house, without noises, without footsteps and without many other noises that I no longer remember, but that I always thought were from the house. And something strange happened to me that night. I don't know if it was a dream, I think I really woke up and it happened, but it could have been a very lucid dream. I woke up in the middle of the night, in my bed, and I hear a noise coming from the living room. It was as if someone was shaking a door, trying to open it without success. At that moment, I associated it as a cage, because it was a metallic noise, as if there were a prison gate. Eventually, I fell asleep, but I always remembered that moment because it was so weird. A couple years later, I run into a neighbor who lives a couple of blocks from my house. He's a guy with a lot of sensitivity. I hadn't told him anything about this experience, and he tells me that he had a dream where he talks to a sad man. My neighbor asks a sad man why he is sad, and the man replies that he was kicked out of his house. My neighbor asks a sad man what his name is, and the sad man answers, X name, the same name with which we referred to the presence in my house, an extremely rare name. This experience takes place in the home of my grandmother, which she has lived in for the past 40 or more years. Ever since my grandfather, a mechanic, had passed away in the house, it had always seemed less inviting going back as the memory of seeing him on his final day is depressing. During this past January, my family and I had decided to spend a few weeks at my grandmother's house, who had lived around 600 kilometers away, about 350 miles. I remember the day very clearly. It was approaching seven in the evening and the sky was beginning to dull. 
My cousin, who was present in the experience, had invited me to his house for dinner. The way the house is built is that the garage sits at the bottom of the house. There are a set of enclosed stairs leading from the upstairs to the garage, which is shaped like an upside down L, with a large metal door sealing off the entrance to the stairs at the bottom. And just adjacent to the large metal door is the entrance door which leads outside. Since the entrance door had quite a few locks to get through, and I was not prepared to go back up to fetch the keys, we decided to go through the garage as it was the quickest way through. The garage door itself is not an electric one, and you have to manually lift it to open. I open the large metal door and switch on the light, which is situated right next to the large metal door on the right as you enter. My cousin and I open the garage door as it's very heavy, and I proceed to move to switch the light off with my cousin behind me waiting. As I approach the light switch next to the large door, the handle slowly starts to move up then down. I had thought it was my brother who had told us that he was going to join us for dinner later on. I quickly opened the door expecting to see him, but no one was there. No sound of anyone running up to the stairs, as the sound would without a doubt echo through the enclosed stairway. You had to have tremendous speed, which is not humanly possible, and be as quiet as a cat to ascend without being noticed from where I was standing. I had to ask my cousin if he witnessed the same thing, just to make sure I wasn't crazy. He did see the same thing I saw. We were both baffled. I tried to explain it in every conceivable way, that the door handle slowly went down and up. Maybe the spring jammed? I ruled that out since the handle would spring back up abruptly. Maybe a small animal was able to put weight on the handle? No, because it takes considerable force to push it down. Eventually, I started to believe it was a truly paranormal force, which might have been my grandfather, as the garage area was where he spent most of his time. I'm not a person who believes in the supernatural, but I've explored all avenues of thought.